this has fight of the night written all over it. Like, click, like stamp it on the forehead. Fight of the night all over it, man. Now, Roy Val, he had a, a, a dynamite start into his UFC career, right? Gets the win over Tim Elliott. How impressive. Submits Tim Elliott. How impressive is that? Submits Kai Car of France after hitting him with a crit. He gets dropped, hits him with a crazy spinning back elbow, ends up winning the fight, submits Kai Car of France. How impressive, right? Now, stumbles up with Brandon Moreno. It was a crazy sprawl until Brandon Royval literally throwing a hammer fist dislocates his shoulder. The worst luck that you could possibly have because now, look at it. Brandon Moreno is now the champ or how the tables have turned. But I do need to say this before we start breaking it down. Give me, I need to know who you think has the better nickname, my man. The Brazilian, Pantoja, the Cannibal. How do you get a nickname like that? This man's killing people out here, man. Or Raw Dog Brandon Royval. Which nickname you like better? Man, I have to go with my boy Raw Dog on this one. I think not only is it like hilarious, if you know the the terminology, Raw Dog, Roy Val, is really funny. But also, man, you don't ever want to be locked in a cage with a homie named Raw Dog. Like that's the worst. That's the worst case scenario. I'd rather be eaten by a cannibal than than locked in there with some dude named Raw Dog. Man, that's uh, that's, that's rough right there. And I'm with you. I'm with you. Now, uh, all right, man. All jokes aside, we got a one win, uh, a, a one fight win streak, if you want to call it that, for Pantoja. One fight losing streak for Roy Val. They're not really streaks, but that is where they stand currently. Uh, listen, in the UFC, man, seven and three is Pantoja. He has ten fights. Brandon Roy Val is two and one, only three. I need to know off the bat, experience wise, man. Pantoja has to have a crazy edge here, simply in experience, right? Roy Val, he's an LFA champ and all that good stuff. You know, he was he was doing all that good stuff. But Pantoja, man, he's been around, he's seen it all, done it all, and somehow, some way, he's still, to me, I feel dis he's he's under respected as to the caliber in which he should be. Do you agree? Oh, yeah, 100%, Derek. Most people don't even know the name Pantoja. I know even the last time we were covering his fight, I was struggling pronouncing it. So, <laughs> no, nah, he's definitely under under uh, under notice. But And he looked good in the Manel Cape fight, man. Manel Cop, however you say his name, too. I'm messing that one up as well. But regardless, man, Pantoja, he looked really, really good. And he was able to put a star like Cop. And really kind of make him not look that shiny, man. Pantoja is a real deal killer out there. Absolutely. And I think that that went over Manel Cop, man. And we saw how, we saw, we know how good Manel Cop is, bro. We know how good he is. So for Pantoja to do what he did, some people argue that, you know, Cop should have won. I think Pantoja got it, man. It's just more volume. You know what I'm saying? He got the job done. Um, but with that being said, that's a lot of experience. It's a nice feather to have under your cap. And how do you see that experience parlaying into this fight against Brandon Roy Val? We know one thing about Roy Val is that uh, sprawls, constant movement. Granby rolls the whole entire night. That's what he does. That there's no Brandon Roy Val fight that you're gonna watch where he's not just being crazy, doing crazy things that fly weight to do. One thing that I heard that was a good analogy is he said, if you like to see weights flying through the air, like heavy, just just like weights, like dumbbells flying through the air, that's what these two fighters are about to be. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, AJ. I know Brandon Roy Val can keep this high of a pace for three rounds, but the X factor is that he's coming off of a shoulder dislocation, whatever you want to call it. He's coming off of a shoulder surgery, and he even said it in the pre-fight presser, which gave me a little bit of pause. He said that Brand, uh, that his doctor encouraged him, like, hey, man, uh, you might be rushing it back, and since you do want to come back so early, why don't you fight, like, number seven instead of number three? And he's like, nah, bro, like, I just, I just got it like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't believe in my heart, doc. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Um, do you think that Brandon Roy Val's shoulder injury is going to play like some type of x factor into this fight man because i feel like it we can't break down the fight without mentioning this yeah no i agree with you i uh personally i hope not i don't think it's going to a lot of the time you know doctors they like to play it on the safe side you know they'd rather not obviously re-injure yourself and come see them again you know even though it's money in their pocket but a lot of the time they like to play it a little bit on the safe side i think it really comes down to the heart and the mind of brandon roy ball Going forward, man, if he's if he's feeling good, because there's there's times where you'll be throwing stuff, you know, somebody, you know, puts you in a Kimura or something, you feel it, you're like, all right, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. But I mean, if he's been putting in the hours in, I think it's not really going to be that big of an X factor. Although you never know until you're rolling around on the ground and something weird kind of happens when you're going full force against another man who's also going full force. So I definitely think it could play into this fight going forward, but I hope it doesn't, man. There's nothing worse than seeing a shoulder come out and you're just like, ugh. No, absolutely. Absolutely, man. Okay, so and when we're talking about the X's and O's, we're talking about Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Both of these dudes are black belts. Both of these dudes are absolutely legit. I want to know, do you think anybody has an edge here or do you think that their BJJ talents cancel out? Um, I think their BJJ talents cancel out more often than not, but I think the little 
advantage that's going into this is Brandon Roy Vall is a little bit more unexpected. He's a little bit more, you know, kind of crazy. He's the, there's not too much tape on him at least. So that way, you know, Pantoja, he's not able to get that much research on him, even though, you know, at the end of the day, it is BJJ. So most everything known to humankind is out there already. Um, but as far as, you know, a little bit of canceling out, I do think there we're going to see a little bit more of a stand up fight going forward because these dudes are so experienced on the ground. What do you think? Do you think it cancels out or is it going, you know, we're going to see some crazy moves going forward? Well, so I think that at first, my first reaction was, OK, these dudes, their BJJ is so good. It's going to cancel out. However, I do think Roy Val's his scrambles might be a little bit better, but Pantoja's control might be a little bit better. So it's just different in that sense. But I want to actually ask you a couple of questions, quick fire questions. You just give me quick answers on these ones. OK. Pantoja likes to walk forward. Brandon Roy Val, he can go backwards, he can go forward, but he he's crazy, man. Unorthodox, chaotic movements. Who leads the dance in this fight? I think it's going to be Pantoja's leading the dance a little sturdy footed. Okay. Pantoja, we know he is, like you said, sturdy footed. He likes to walk forward and he throws everything with bad intentions, man. Roy Val said it himself. He says, I don't think I've ever seen a Pantoja fight where he throws a jab that doesn't have bad knockout intentions on it. So, with that being said, we it's like kind of like Song Yudong versus Casey Kenny, right? We knew Casey Kenny likes to sit down on his shots. That's when Song Yudong would just move out the way, hit him with a couple, and you know, and they just repeat the process time and time again. Winch, uh, wash, rinse, repeat. Do you think that Pantoja is going to have a hard time finding the mark accuracy wise against Brandon Roy Val in this fight? Oh yeah, with the with how elusive Brandon Roy Val is, I think it's going to be a little bit more challenging for him to actually <clears throat> not just hit the mark, but hit the mark hard. Over under. Spinning elbows for Brandon Roy Val in this fight. Five. Over, under. Under. Okay. He but said it's a it. hard one. Yeah, he said it. He was all like, maybe I shouldn't have done four or five spinning back elbows in my last fight against Moreno. Probably wasn't a good idea. But hey, you know, it worked for me in the last fight. Um, and ultimately, round three. Two minutes into round three. There's three minutes left on the clock. Who has more in the gas tank? That's that's the hardest one so far, man. Uh, I'm gonna say uh, Roy Vall, Roy Vall on this one. I think he's gonna work, be a little bit more cautious going forward. Okay, and I'm gonna push back here because um, I agree with you. I think Roy Vall is going to have the fresher gas tank, but I don't even think it's close, man. I think it's gonna be by a mile. I think Brandon Roy Vall is made for doing these crazy high intensity, putting the pace on you all three rounds. Alessandre Pantoja, if there's one thing that we know about him is that because he throws so hard, especially if it's a big like wrestling heavy, jujitsu scramble heavy contest by the third round, he's still throwing 100% power on all these shots, but it's a little more labored. You feel me? These kicks are not as sharp. You feel me? These overhands are just kind of looping around. So I honestly think that Brandon Roy Val will have his best opportunity to get a win in the third round. However, he has to make it to the third round so my last question before we give picks on this one and i know this was a little unorthodox in the way that we presented um this this breakdown for this specific matchup but the last question is brandon roy val has a tendency to keep his hands down you know he has very low hands he's a southpaw he gets caught he's been caught in all of his ufc fights so far he's been able to weather the storm and continue on and win the fight against except against uh, moreno but nonetheless when pantoja hits you man it's a little bit different man do you think pantoja can get the job done in the first two rounds no, I don't think he can, man. I think it's going to take a little bit more to get get Roy Vall out of there. I don't necessarily think it's going to be an easy night for either fighter, to be honest. Okay, understood. So with that being said, man, give me your final assessment of this matchup and give me your pick. Man, I think this one's going to be a lot of fun, to be honest. I do think that Pantoja's experience is going to play into the fight going forward. Make it a little bit, you know, a, a little bit grittier of a match. Kind of compose himself a little bit more where Brandon Roy Val's trying to show out, man. I think this one's going to be a lot of fun. Having both of them be really, really good at jujitsu, I think it's going to cancel out. So we're going to see some uh, some nice shots coming forward, some good striking. Overall, I got Roy Val with a KO round two. I think he's coming to play, man. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. He has these sneaky, sneaky knees he likes to throw, especially with his wild strikes. You don't really know when things are coming, and I think that's going to lead to Pantoja trying to shoot, get hurt, trying to shoot something and get caught with a knee coming up the middle, man. I got Roy Val with a KO round two. Who you think, Derek? Okay, so I see the fight 
playing out just a little bit differently in this matchup. I think that Brandon Roy Val is going to be very back and forth in the first round, but I think Pantoja, the thing that he does that is good in the eyes of the judges is that he walks forward, he cuts off the cage, and he just throws volume, man. He throws shots, whether it hits you, whether it glances off of you, he's throwing hard, and the judges see that, and they're like, oh, that one landed, that one landed, okay, blah, 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 regardless if it landed or not. So I think he's going to be cutting off the cage. I think come round three, he's going to get probably a little bit tired, and that'll be Brandon Roy Val's round, come round three, and if Roy Val cannot get the finish, I think Brandon, I think uh, Alexandre Pantoja wins this fight via decision. And if the fight does get to the ground and we do get into these scramble situations, we have to remember the way that Brandon Moreno was able to control Brandon Royval in their last fight. He had his back and he just basically had him for about a round, you know what I'm saying, until they got back up to the feet, did these scrambles and whatnot. But we've seen he's been able to be controlled. And I think Pantoja is a little stronger, just a stronger individual than Brandon Royval. I mean, if you look at the frames, Royval is kind of, he's very like uh, frail. So don't get me wrong, man. This whole entire week leading up to this fight, I've been Roy Val. I wanted Roy Val to win this fight. I'm still, I'm rooting for Roy Val. I just think Pantoja is going to get the job done. I'm also the X factor for me. I just don't really like the fact that he's coming off of an injury. You know what I'm saying? I think that that's not going to play into his, his chances very well. I think that's going to hinder it a little bit. Maybe be a little more cautious because you don't want that thing to pop out again. We'll see what happens. Either way, man, it's going to be a banger of a fight. And uh, yeah, I got Pantoja via decision. So.